Hey, everybody, I'm Kim Holderness. And I'm Penn Holderness. We are back on the YouTubes for our podcast after a brief great break. These are our Amazing Race special recap episodes. They're on podcasts audio and also on YouTube video. And this is a very special week. This is uh, a guest we have been chasing for a while, and he was good enough to give us a significant chunk of his time today. We are talking to the host of The Amazing Race. Phil Kogan. Big Phil. Big Phil. Well, that's what we named. Yeah. Yeah. That's not his name. That's not, his name is Phil. I'm calling him Big Phil. Um, remember to subscribe to this podcast wherever you get your podcast. Leave a review. Those really help us. Um, but into Phil, Phil Kogan is host and co-executive producer of CBS's reality series, The Amazing Race. And he's the creator of the CBS show Tough as Nails. He was born in New Zealand. Phil started traveling at the age of two with his family. After a near-death experience at the age of 19, he decided to live his life to the fullest. He has visited more than 100 countries. I think he said 100... 170 something. No, 130 something. Yeah, was, yeah. well, boy, well, I don't remember that right. Okay, yeah. moving on. <laughs> a lot of countries. Yeah. And, and has been sharing his exotic travel adventures on camera for almost 30 years. Phil is an avid cyclist. He has amazing calves. We didn't even get to talk about that. He has really good calves. Right, everyone talked about Ryan's calves. On this Phil's season. were spectacular because he rides so much bike. He bike. He rides a lot <laughs> yeah, of bikes. Rides a lot of bikes. Yeah, he's ridden his bike from LA to New York. Um, it was like a fundraising trip. We heard about it. Yeah. Um, he's an author, motivational speaker, philanthropist, where he's raised more than a million dollars for charity, and he's earned numerous awards, including two primetime em- Emmys for The Amazing Race, among others. He lives in LA with his wife and his daughter, yeah. and he's an all around great guy. And we talk about some really cool stuff uh, in this episode with Phil. We we get kind of a behind the scenes look at what a day is like for him, and y'all, he's like old school and does a lot of things other than just host. He ranked my clue that wasn't a clue event um, in the all time dumbest things that have happened on amazing race, which I was very grateful for. And he uh, received a lot of advice from Kim on Instagram that he may or may not have wanted. Well, to get. No, no, no. But I will say he also, there was a question asked like, does he make predictions on who will be top three, who will win a season? And you will hear where he kind of had us, mm-hmm. it was not as a winner. <laughs> so let's bring him in now. <laughs> okay, welcome, Phil. Welcome, Phil, to our little corner of the internet. We're happy to have you. Um, what What is the little corner? Where are you in, in your house? We're in a, a finished attic space in our house. Mm-hmm. Oh, so you're you're upstairs, and and uh, I, are you able to like pan around and show us where you are? You're yeah, if you'd like, like I can do that. For yes, you. this um, is where the magic it's, happens. Phil's Phil. a producer. Um, and he likes this stuff. We have a lot of wires connected, okay. but okay. Oh, wow. That's where he writes his music. Let me, ah, let me okay. stand up and show. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh my God. And you, oh, you've got one. Of, I love those desks. That's one of those desks where you can use the button to go up and down. I do. I need that because uh, Phil, you and I have talked about our age. You're <laughs> you're older than me and more impressive, but like <laughs> my my lower back is starting to uh, do a little work. Oh. Me, so yeah. So I have the same desk, and if I press the button, yep. let's see what happens. Why is it not going up? Well, oh, you're doing this now. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Okay. Look, oh, I got oh Phil's sinking. You know what? It actually makes yeah. me feel more important when you're down like that. So let's just right. do the oh, rest of the interview like this. Do this. Oh God, or? Phil. It's you, like you're at the kids' table. Yeah. I right. like it. This is for those of you just listening to the podcast. Phil has just uh, <laughs> dollied his desk up so that he looked very small, <sighs> and now has uh, has returned back to earth. And we're you know we're going to actually talk about that later on this show because Phil actually and I share a passion of leaving the earth, and we're going to get to that yeah. later. Or at least that's yeah. what the internet says. Yeah, and your book says. Um, no, okay. no, but I, I I actually back in the nineties I had a uh, there was this program NASA had like a journalist program where you could sign up and put your name in to go. Yeah. And uh, I, I put my name in. I never got called. I don't know why, but um, oh my gosh. I never got called. I, I guess they, they missed opportunity. an opportunity. But don't you feel like there's going to be more opportunities? I mean, Mike Strahan went up there. William Shatner went up there. You probably call him Bill. Bill, Your buddy Bill Shatner went up there. I, I don't know Bill, okay. but I have a friend who's a good friend with him. See? Apparently, <laughs> super nice guy. Um, well, yeah, Tom Bergeron, who um, I worked with for many years back in the nineties is very good friends with, uh, with Mr. Shatner. I call him, um, Mr. Shatner. Well, I love me some Tommy B. I don't know who Tom Bergeron. I mean, I know who he is, but we're not friends. He's dancing with the stars. No, I know who I'm huge fan, not friends, but would love. he's a good, he's a good guy. 
Uh, so we brought you on here to talk to you about other TV shows. Let's do it. No, I'm yeah. joking. No. <laughs> um, but you, but uh, Phil is very interesting. And in, 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 like we spent some time with him, mostly probably on the plane was the most relaxed time that we spent with him and realized just how much this dude knows and how much he does mm-hmm. is stunning, right? Right. Yeah, so you're you're working on the Amazing Race. You're working as tough as nails. So we saw you were working. I would say um, all the time, all the time. Yeah. But let's back it up a second. So season 30, 33 of the Amazing Race. We'll start there. Did you ever think that we would actually get back to finish this race? Um, yes, I did. I just didn't anticipate the gap. Mm-hmm. And when when I had to tell all of you that we were suspending the race, it was not easy. Um, a, as you will remember, it was very emotional. And um, I, I realized in that moment that not all of you were going to be able to come back. It just the, the, the planets have to align for people to get off work for, for the idea that maybe some people wouldn't be together by the time we got back. I didn't. <laughs> I, I mean, it, us, it, we were real rocky. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was one relationship that was kind of oh. solid. I feel like you guys, yeah. Anyway, I feel like there was <laughs> not a lot of chance of that happening. But um, well, they're on a different show now. I don't know if you know that, but that's, there are, there is a different CBS franchise that they're currently participating in. So it all worked oh, out for them. That other show, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know if we're allowed to talk about that. But anyway, hey, we're here. We're another here. show, <laughs> the one where they go to space. Um, yeah. No, right. uh, we didn't, and we didn't get invited. No, I, I, I thought maybe we would be off maybe for three months. I thought it would be like maybe a three, maybe three months. Mm -hmm. If you'd said to me 19 months, I would have said, Oh no, 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 no. This would be like, you know, the swine flu. It'll be like, uh, you know, the H one N one, or is that the same thing? Anyway, I, I just figured, I figured we'd be back much sooner. And I also, you know, in that moment you, you start to wonder like, are we overreacting? Are we, uh, none of us really knew it's easy in hindsight to say, of course we had to do that. But, if you remember in the moment, it was like we there was a bit of guessing going on as well because right. nobody really knew. No, we'd never faced anything like this before. So everybody's an expert after the fact. But the reality is, if I was being honest, and I can't speak for everybody else, I I also was wondering, like, are we overreacting? Are we doing the right thing? It felt like the right thing. But then, yeah, I had no idea that it would take that long. But I also was very, you know, really adamant, like, we will get this back on track yeah. at some point. There's been a lot of talk of of the you know what everybody had to do to get the season back on track. Looking forward, what are the things that you guys put in place that you think really worked and you're going to adapt for future seasons of the race? Well, I think one of the elements that was lost obviously was the the going to the airport, the booking of the flights in the airport and um you know, some fans miss that. Mm -hmm. Uh, But there was also this other element that happened with the charter flight, as you know, getting on that plane. And there's a lot of camaraderie. You guys got to spend a lot of time with your other contestants in a different way, right? Like Mm -hmm. you had your own space Mm -hmm. uh, on, on the plane. So I I've always said with, with shows that run for a long, long time, there's a, there's a tendency to want to, change the format. Um, what are we going to do this season? That's going to spice it up. You know, it's probably the most common question I get from the press. So what are you doing this season? That's new and different. And it's sort of a go-to question. And yet my feeling is you don't mess with formats. You don't change the rules of the NFL every season. You don't say, Oh, we're going to make the field bigger. We're going to throw with a heavier ball. We're going to wear less protection. We're going to like radically change the rules of the game. So to me, it's the same with tough, with, with tough as nails and with amazing race or survivor. If you find a format that works, don't change it. It's so hard to get it right, but enhance the format. And I feel like with, we were forced to enhance the format to make a, a change with this charter flight and, and, and with these staggered starts. And I think it, it resonated with the audience. It was like kind of a fresh way of getting into 
the existing format without messing with the format. Yeah, you so, made you made some like you said you made some changes obviously because you had to. Um, yes. Are, are there any changes that you guys think moving forward you're going to stick with um, that you realize? Oh, hang on, by accident we just discovered a new way to do this that we might like more than the way that we used to. Well, I think we will in in the next season we're going to be adhering to some of the similar changes that we made just because we have to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As as far as w- whether we'll go back you know, whether we'll continue with the charter. I don't know if it's necessarily sustainable because it's very expensive. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed um, it. I, 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 it kept lo- yeah, I kept looking at the EPs when I was on the plane, like, thank you. This Are you amazing. guys going to be okay? <laughs> like this can't be cheap. Yeah, and especially now you may know their fuel prices are going up. Um, yeah. So <laughs> I, think, I didn't think about that. So it, look, it's it's the, the idea of a charter flight has been something that's been discussed on race for a long, long time. Um, but it's never really been a uh, it's never been feasibly viable. And so we were forced to do it this time. But I don't personally, I don't think it's a sustainable thing going forward. You know, we'll end up being scattered over different flights. And yeah, I can't see it being a long term solution. And that being said, so you you produce. Um, you're, you're part of an integral part of Amazing Race, obviously, but you have Tough as Nails that you're, we saw you doing a lot of work on, on that and looking at early cuts and stuff like that. Um, sure. you are, you are so, you know, famous in this TV world. We work in like this little internet handheld space. And so it was fascinating for us to see how, you know, how a big fancy TV show is produced. Yeah. And also just to see how involved, um, you are in a lot of it. Like I, there, there are, look, I'm just going to say this. There are hosts of shows who roll up, they do a couple standups. They're gone after like a couple of days and they get paid and they're done. Like their job is just to be on camera. Uh, we saw front and center that you're pretty hands-on when it comes to this. And Kim and I both, like, we think that it has to do with the fact that you came from a similar background to us. Like we were, we worked in small market television. We learned how to shoot. We learned how to edit. We learned how to do all of these things. How important are those principles in what you're still doing as really the on-camera TV host? Well, yeah, it's, I, I, I also know hosts who like to just roll up and do their thing and they do it really well. And when you see a, you know, the difference between a good host and a very good host, you know, they're, there are lots of people who can read a prompter and there's lots of people who can, who are good, but the, that little extra, you know, the, 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 whatever that je ne sais quoi is, whatever that thing is that people like in a, in people that they watch on camera that they find interesting to watch. I don't know how you describe that. Um, we know when we know, I guess it's like when you find a partner, when you just, you can't really describe it, but you just know, you, you just know there's something there. For me personally, I I don't get enough out of just standing in front of a camera and and doing, you know, presenting. I, I can do that. Um, I don't want to say with my eyes closed, but there's lots of presenting jobs that you can do where it's, you know, after you've done it for I've been doing this since I was 19 years old and and, and I'm 50 going to be 55 this year. So I've been doing this a long, long time and you have to kind of keep reinventing yourself and keeping it fresh and trying to find new and different ways of doing things. So for me, the stimulation comes from, you know, starting with the writing and, 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 um, and writing the material that I'm going to be delivering, which I do with one of our other producers. And, uh, and, and essentially we, we research and we riff, I basically take, digest the material and I just sort of say it out loud and then we write it down and then we start to hone it down. And, um, and so I enjoy that part of it. And then also I started as a camera assistant. So I loaded film back in the mid eighties. I came through a very regimented training regime of learning, uh, about cameras. And over the years I've continued to, to, uh, follow my knowledge of cameras. So I know all the latest cameras. I understand the principles of photography and I'm, enamored with that part of the business. I love cinematography. I wanted to be a cinematographer and a director when I was young. And then I sort of, I also did a lot of improv theater. So I, I really see myself as somebody who's not really very good at one particular thing. I just kind of know 
a, a little bit about a lot of things. And I like that. I like being that jack of all trades. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not really necessarily a master in one particular thing. No, I think that's why it works. And would you ever consider, because TV is like, it's, it might as well be outer space for us. Um, but would you ever consider, you know, moving stuff? Everything's moving to streaming. But, you know, I was trying to give you advice on the back of the plane about building up your Instagram and stuff like that. Would you ever invest I more? I suck in at that, by the way. I, <laughs> you I, suck um, until you don't. Until you don't. Yeah. No, no, I really don't. That's like, a cop I, out. Come on. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm really not good at it. I, I, I find it very difficult to, to put myself out there that way. I, I'm... Um, like I found it really difficult as we were building up to, to the finale of this last season to yeah, I, I get, um, I don't know. It's, I, I admire what it is you are able to do. And I admire the way other people are able to do that. I I've come, I came through sort of the old school system, right? Where you had to get employed for a job and then you would do the job and you would execute the job. But I've, I, I'm okay at it. But if you look at, like where my Instagram has grown. Like, I think it's been stagnant for five years. The number we'll, of people we'll tag that follow you. me. We'll tag you and see if we can get those numbers up. Well, hang on. I want to <laughs> hear more about what he says, because I, I think you were about to get to a point where is it, does it, do you feel like posting on Instagram brings too much attention on you and not on the story you're telling? Is that what this is? Or like, what, like, what is that feeling that you're trying to describe there? I'm curious. I'm sort of, uh, I, I get uncomfortable Yeah, because uh, I've had people tell me, why don't you do this post? Why don't you do a thing about, uh, you know, I've had product that I've sold before and I'm sort of uncomfortable uh, soliciting that, you know, for people to go buy things or do things. I don't know. I, uh, I, I'm not very good at it. I, it's, it's actually a discussion that I've had with a number of people who have approached me and said, dude, you just really need some help with this because you're, <laughs> you really suck at it. And, <laughs> Um, it was just me in the back of the plate. Don't worry. <laughs> well, no, no, no. But you're not the only one. I mean, I, I, I have people approach me all the time, you know, these companies that do that sort of thing. And they'll say to me, uh, they'll, they'll point out the fact that my Instagram and my Twitter and stuff is not growing and it's stagnant, stagnant. And, you know, we could really help you and you need to do this and you need to do that. But as you know, it's a lot of work. I, I find it so hard to keep up with what I'm, I mean, case in point, you saw me, I was on the plane mm -hmm. doing cuts. It takes me about anywhere between 15 and 17 hours to do notes on an, on a internal rough cut on a show. Um, and I, and, and it's a lot of concentration and going through all the transcripts of every word and, and, and then going through all, every single piece of footage. So anywhere between the most would be 20 hours on an internal rough cut. And I was doing all of that while we were on the road. Plus I was going back to my room and recording voiceover for tough as nails while we were still doing race. Plus, you know, staying on top of the race job is, as you see, it's like full on. It's yeah. readjusting the writing and the, and, 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 and so I just, I'm like, I don't have, I don't know where, I, where to find the time to do the other part. And of it, to I be honest with you. I, and I, I think I said to you that I'm like, you don't, nobody like you don't have to. And because you're doing fine without it. Yeah. And, yeah. And it, it's just because we never got, we were never into the TV space. So this is yeah. some, this right. is just an alternative and to it, but you don't have to. I, I will accept your explanation. You're good. Like it, this but is, I, yeah, this is good. I, I want to go back to something you just said. You just said it takes you 15 to 17 hours. And you said to go through all of the footage. And I want to just clarify something here. The first episode, there's 11 photographers on 11 teams, which is 11 timelines of multiple hours of what's going on. Okay. Well, then I, I, this... meant, I meant tough as nails. Tough as nails. I, okay. I don't go through the footage of Amazing Race. Okay. I got you. Um, yeah. I, I do my part of it. My host stand ups, I go through that footage. I got you. And, and, um, and, and, and look at the takes from my stuff, my responsibility. But with, with, with tough as nails, it's, it's, uh, you, you know, there's, there's still a, still a lot of footage. There's 27 cameras in the oh vans for drive time. There's, uh, um, there's, uh, uh, like 11 or 12 primary cameras and we have them all, as you know, on, in Avid, you can put all the cameras into a block and group them all. So I'm looking at all of them and then I'll dig into all the specialty shots and I make string outs for the editors of, of shots that catch my eye 
in a one pass, you know, like I'm looking. So, I, I mean, I don't have to do it. It's just I feel that when you, if you put that kind of attention and in, 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 into the detail of things, you can, again, you t- trying to take something from good to very good and that requires that kind of attention to detail, I think. That's amazing that, I mean, that's just as hard as the amazing race, 27 cameras. Like I'm an editor and that gives me a little bit of anxiety even thinking about that. So, well, here's the thing. I, I don't thankfully have to group all these, all these uh, cameras and, um, you know, we, (laughs) the three of us, we appear in front of a camera, right. Um, and, and people know us, but, um, but as you know, and having been on Amazing Race, there are all these people, mm-hmm. thousands, literally, that are involved in, in an Amazing Race season who are driving, who are looking after security, who are looking after meals and COVID tests and excess baggage and canes and all that processing stuff, all that infrastructure that allows us to go in front of a camera and have that moment and to share 43 minutes in front of an audience um, and, and that part, I know you guys get because you understand when you put out a final product, everything that comes before that, all that preparation, all that thought and, and right. And then as you know, on a television show, it's even more layered because you're, you're, you're talking about flights and all yeah. the logistics and everything that's involved. It's, it's, it's massive. And, uh, and, and so that's why. It, it's important for people to sort of understand that we get to do what we do on Amazing Race as a result of all the people who do what they do to get us there. <laughs> yeah. And I, I would say I've told people have asked us, like, would you do, you know, Amazing Race again? And I said this while on the race. I don't like my anxiety is too crazy. I know I couldn't be a contestant on the race again, but I would love to go work for the race I just it looked like the entire time I mean I'm like sitting there digging for rocks and I'm like you have a lot of you got a drone you got I'm, I'm like and I'm getting kind of caught up in that so here's a question two two question what do you look for when casting the race because I was surprised to see you when we had to do all those interviews I was like oh there's Phil yeah um, I didn't know that you would be in there what do you look for when casting and then what we had a couple people text in or message in. They want to know, they want to get hired by the race. So like, how do you get a job on a show like tough as nails or the race? So first casting, what are you looking for? Well, casting again, I would say, you know, it, it, it's the best, the best analogy I can think of is, is, is what are you looking for in a partner in a, you know, is somebody who is going to be a soulmate, you know, I, Sometimes you just don't know until because you don't know what you don't know about what you want. And then all of a sudden, you know, you guys meet each other and you're like, oh, my God, I, you know, I never knew that a guy could make me feel so good. Or, you know, it's you don't necessarily know how to describe that before you 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 encounter it. Right. So it's the same with with people who, when when we audition people and we used to do it in a room, people would walk into a room and within 10 seconds, I would say within 10 seconds, there's something. And then you're kind of curious and then you want to know more. And then they light up the room and then you can't help but look at them and you can't help but feel good around them. And then you're like, there is something about them that makes them special. So the advice I always give to people is don't try to be Kim and Penn. Don't try to be be, you know, David and Mary or Kenton Vixen or any, or the Globetrotters. Don't try to be anybody else. Just be yourself. And the more you can be yourself, the more likely you are to be chosen. Now, not everybody uh, has that, whatever it is. I, and, and I don't, to, to describe it, I mean, how would you describe the difference between you and the Cowboys or you and uh, <laughs> yeah. some of the more memorable teams like Charlotte and Mira that we've had on the show. You can't, this, I mean, the similarities are that you're interesting to watch. Yeah. That's the similarity. But apart from that. I actually thought our interview, I thought we were, we came off as a little boring. Like I, I walked out the door. I'm like, we, we kind of sucked. It, it's it's because that's, no, what we, we, that's what we said. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, we went yeah. right after Michael and Mo and they were, t- they were burning the house. I know. Down. I like, heard we could laughing. Hear them I was and like, like oh, crap. Geez. I don't know how this is going to work. I will say this. Um, 
I, I feel like you guys definitely don't just look at um, at these people as themselves, but it's a relationship show, right? The, like the, you've said this before, it's a re- you look at what their relationship looks like. Isn't that a big reason for you have to like fulfill certain types of relationships, and you also have to have, um, you know, you you have to have something interesting about the bond that these people share. Yeah, and exactly right. I mean, going back to the original conceit of the the idea when 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 Bertram and Elise came up with this idea. Uh, it was it was about pre-existing relationships, like interesting relationships that would make for good TV. And then you put them into an interesting situation. And the challenges are really just to get people to emote, to get them to have those moments that you guys had standing there on that bungee jumping bridge, you know, um, and 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 the. the the way that you looked at each other and what you were going through and how you shared that experience together. And we get to watch that and we, and that makes for, for entertainment. So yes, that relationship has to be a dynamic one. It's not just about one person. I mean, there's many times when people have walked in and one of the two people has been really captivating and really telegenic and really interesting to watch. And then the other person is just, it's just like, there's nothing going on between them and, and this other person is just not going to be interesting. The other part of it is the ability of the of the team to to be able to uh, share the experience with the viewer. And w- one of the things that you were both very good at was was bringing people into your experience, and that comes from your media savviness um, because you are people who have the ability to connect with a viewer and to be able to explain what's going on in the moment. And you, you also wore your emotions on your sleeve. You guys didn't hold back. You, you, you expressed when you were feeling anxious, you expressed when you were feeling uh, heartfelt about something. And so all of that just makes for good TV. There's lots of people that come in and they do a really good audition and then we send them out and, and they're disappointing quite frankly, because they don't, they kind of shut down. They start to sense themselves. They start to see the edit. They start to think about how they're going to be portrayed. And so then they put up these walls and the audience can see it straight away. It's like this person is not really letting go. They're not really sharing the experience. And I admire anybody who comes on race. Somebody said to me, would you ever want to do it? And I've said, no, again, it goes back to this whole thing with the, (laughs) with the Instagram thing. Mm -hmm. I find it difficult sometimes to sort of let that go and let people see too much, you know, I, I, and, and you guys are prepared to put it out there and wear your hearts on your sleeves and allow us to live with you, uh, for a month out on the road. And uh, yeah, I mean, you're you're exposing yourself, you're putting your lives in our hands to cut something together of your experience. I honestly thought we wouldn't be in the show a lot because I thought we were actually really boring. Well, you could tell there was some, there were some legs where we just like, we did really, really well. And (laughs) I was like, and this is really boring. You guys aren't even going to show us. It (laughs) wasn't as fun for me to watch. I really enjoyed the one. My favorite episode was the one where I stared at the clue for 20 minutes. The one where you screwed up. That was a clue. I don't know why. Like, I just like the way they edited it. They put this goofy music in and there was like a zoom in on my face and I made this face and my kids were like, dad, I know that that face. It's It's like like his lock screen on his phone right now. Like that was my, to be honest with you, who would have imagined that something that we thought would be just like a a shoe in for everybody, like literally come down, (laughs) you figure it out, you go through, ends up being this like real, and you, I could see your mind is going, nah, there's no way. It's like, so you easy. Nah. It's, this is not, this is not right. There's, this can't be right. And he's it's too, just like he's watching that smart. was really fun. As an editor, I, I mean, I know like that's, I, I caught a lot of flack from my friends about it. Obviously like get on the train. I think I got 1500 texts that said, get on the train. But like those, those moments I think for me are more interesting than finishing first on the mat. I know that, I, I, don't think so. I know that seems strange. Yeah. Um, I like, but I, don't you think too that, don't you think too that when um, when you watch something, when you watch a game show, uh, and you 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 can you can come up with the answers very quickly. You know, you're relaxed, you're at home, you're having a beer, and you watch it. And and those shows are also designed to make the audience feel really smart, right? They always will put something up, and it seems so obvious, you know, because they'll put yeah. the answer up, and so they and and they deliberately do that so that the audience loves to go to that show because when they turn that show on, 
they're revealing the answers and then the audience feels like, yeah, of course it's that. And, and so it makes them feel smart. So they love tuning into the show. But when you're in the moment and there you're in a race and there's these people, sometimes the most obvious thing is like your brain doesn't like connect, like, <laughs> and, and, and it's easy to look from the outside and say, what an idiot. What the hell's going on? What, so on the list of dumbest things anyone's done on the show, am I like cracking the top five? Because, I mean, you've seen I a lot of them. You've seen a lot of dumb stuff. I would say right. that. Top 10 for sure. Yeah, definitely top 10. I, that's what I would say. I, mean, yeah, the, the, I love a good the, top The couple 10. that didn't use the Express Pass that had it. That's oh, like the number surfboard one. one? Yeah. Yeah, the surfboard one. But, yeah. you, but you're also on the list of, you know, top 10 smartest things. Like you guys were the way you guys figured stuff out and, and the, the, you know, the memory challenges and all of that. So, yeah, you guys like really went for the full spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest idiots. <laughs> okay. So How many times did you touch that rock before you turned oh it over? Oh my around? God. I got, I'm still getting emails. So like, it was so obvious. I was like, yeah, middle yeah. fingers. Yeah. I'm like, Ugh. Well, if it's any consolation, when we were out there shooting the, uh, the stand up, I was out there shooting the stand up. I was out there for, I don't know, an hour or something like that. And I, turned over quite a few stones. I never found it either. So, um, yeah, yeah it no, was, it was, it then, was like definitely yeah. tough. Well, and then also some sick, sick person. Oh, I know what she's about to say. Put them yeah. all in the same area. Yeah. So like you were, you're thinking like, Oh, she just found it there. It's not going to be there. It was right there. And it was nowhere near. Cause so Kim immediately went to the place where the GoPros oh, were. I was thinking, I'm like, right? I'm we're gonna... thinking like producers, there were GoPros all over the place. And Kim's like, Oh God, if there's a GoPro I... there. That's where it's going to be. And I know how wide the GoPro goes. So right. I was just doing the pie shape of the GoPros. They mm. even weren't there. Didn't work. Didn't work. It's so... almost like one of those producers. I'm not going to say their names. I love them dearly, but not they, bad. they can be sadistic. <laughs> Okay. On this show. So we got, we got a lot of questions in from our Instagram people, Phil. And if you're on Instagram, I'm kidding. Um, and there, there's barely, barely yeah. kicking, a, <laughs> kicking a man while he's down. Um, I'm going through, um, this one is, um, from me uh, tell me your favorite cast and why it's season 33. <laughs> <laughs> um, you there's know. no way in hell I'm ever going to do that. And by the way, uh, uh, why would I do that? You know, the I'm hundreds kidding. of teams, that, I'm kidding. the, the I'm hundreds kidding. of teams that we've had, but I, I, I have to say th there are just certain p teams that have stood out over the years. And, um, yeah, yeah, no, I'm not gonna no, you're fine. That. You're fine. Um, so somebody asked, do you, do you make predictions before, you know, before a race starts, do you make predictions? And if so, what were they of this season? I have my, I have my predictions written down somewhere. Um, oh, he's I got a book, you guys. Did you bring uh, your book out? Your your Bible? Oh well, we we take bets, okay. and um, uh, off the record, we take bets. It's high stakes. It's like a dollar each, mm -hmm. and um, we throw we all throw in a dollar. And there's just there's a group of us of around about seven or eight of us, and we have consistently thrown money in. I I did win one year. Um, I did get the top three. Um, nobody has ever gone three for three, like the top three in, in the order. Exactly. We've got a one, one, two. Okay. Um, but yeah, we do bet. Um, I did, I had you guys in the top three. I didn't have you guys, uh, winning. Um, Go on. Just, yeah, I was going to say it's a surprise. It was a surprise to us as well. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. I figured you guys would be there. I just, I wasn't sure that you were going to win it all. Neither were um, we. Yeah. But listen, that's the cool thing about the show is mm -hmm. that, you know, when you go into a race and Usain Bolt's in the race, yeah, you can kind of know, okay, Usain Bolt's going to be number one. And then based on everybody else's time, you kind of predict the order from one to eight, you know, the way it finishes. On Amazing Race, you have all these teams line up and we all size you up and we look at you guys and we, th you know, we think we know what the hell we're doing and we think we know who's going to finish first and last. Inevitably, it's the opposite of what we think and people surprise us. And I think that's why the show works. I think it is so unpredictable. It's very difficult to judge. Um, and, and a, another question. Um, this is from James from season 32. What do you think about an all winners edition? <laughs> it's from James. <laughs> yeah. From, from James. <laughs> hmm, I wonder why I said that. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think that would be cool. And um, I, I also like a redemption kind of. Uh, yeah. I like a second place as well. Like I want yeah, like, a, like second a, place. a second place. Everybody gets a 
Yeah. Another shot, you know, especially those teams that came really close. I mean, Kaylin we'd Raquel. never get him. Yeah. What's that? Kaylin and Raquel. Raquel were incredibly close. Yeah. Oh, so close. And then probably the closest finish we've ever had was season two with Tara boat. and Will. And I don't know if you remember that season, but Tara and Will are uh, Will standing on top of the hill. Um, yeah. They're racing with uh, with was it Chris and it wasn't Alex. Oh God, his name escaped me. Anyway, it was uh, Chris and the names oh. are hard. Names are anyway. They they there's two teams. They're racing. Will gets ahead of Tara. Tara's behind with the other team, and then Will standing there, calling, screaming out to Tara, like "Go, go, go!" And they're about a hundred feet away from the finish line. Will's about a hundred feet away from the finish line, and then this other team just comes running past Will. Tara comes up, joins Will. The other team, uh, Chris, uh, God, it come to yeah. me in a second. They go running up. They get the win. And then I know Darren, that was oh heartbreaking. So um, we, we just mentioned Kayla and Raquel. And we've been we've been talking about this race on our podcast, obviously, for a couple of weeks now. And we're trying to tell people, OK, look, sometimes, you know, we all know this, like the, the, it gets edited so that it seems a little closer than it actually was. That's television. That's totally understandable. I think everybody who watches it is smart enough to realize that. So the question that everyone gives us is, was it really that close? And back me up here, Phil, like there were so many lead changes in this last leg. I, I imagine it's not always like that. It isn't always like that. And, you know, it's, I get that question a lot as well. Was it really that close? And my, my answer to them is, does it matter? Like, enjoy the TV show. Enjoy <laughs> the experience. What, why, do, why do we need to go into the you know, what really happened, you know, in terms of like, was it 10 minutes? Was it 15 minutes? Was it 30 seconds? What does it really matter? Like just enjoy the entertainment. It was close. They were second, you know? And so we, like we've, we've had super close finishes, but as you know, when you've got thousands of hours of television, you are compressing massive amounts Mm -hmm. of time. You know, we don't show you guys sitting on the plane, you For know, 14 hours, yeah. Chomping through a, a bag of potato chips, getting up to have a pee, coming back, <laughs> having ordering sparkling water. I mean, we take all that out. Yeah. So how long was the plane ride really that short? We just saw you take off and now you're landing. Was the plane ride longer? I mean, what does it really matter? It's it's yeah. like when people get just enjoy the experience. I, uh, that's all. I will say we only drank sparkling water on the plane. That's the, that's the God honest truth. Um, (laughs) here, here's a, here's a team or a question. What's one challenge on the race you would never do? Like, would you ever eat maggot cheese? Would you, I know you would. Oh yeah. That wouldn't be eating. The eating stuff is not really a big issue for me. And I had some of the maggot cheese and it was, you know, it was okay. Would I choose to eat it every day? Not really. I mean, I've, I've tasted better cheese personally. Um, but I certainly don't, you know, if people want to eat cheese with maggots, have at it. Be yeah. my guest. You know what? There's more for you because I am kind of cool with it. But I definitely would try it. And I've eaten the thousand year old egg and I've eaten, you know, all kinds of crazy things. I drank cobra blood once way back in the 90s when I did a show. Um, I've eaten termites and um, I've eaten piranha and, and, and had piranha stew. And I've had all kinds of crazy stuff. But, um, yeah, live octopus we had on season four. Oh. If you remember back in the day, yeah. that's yeah. a delicacy in South Korea. Great, have your live octopus. I'll, you know, I'll have a impossible burger. Thank you. Uh. I mean, I always say to Kim, like, and I said it to her right before she jumped off the cliff. I'm like, it's the amazing race. They're not going to kill you. So I think like that was that was my last piece of advice to her. Was right. like, I just don't think perceived they're gonna- perceived danger. Right. Yeah. You know, it's perceived danger. So uh, again. Again, do we really need to, you know, like if you're watching a show and it's perceived danger and you you look at it and you go, oh, my God, I would never do that. It's so risky. I could die. Yeah, there's a there's a certain element of of suspended belief, if you like, when you watch a television show. Um, my friend co-created commercial bungee jumping back in 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 the late 80s. I was one of the first people to jump. We have an unofficial world record together. His name's Henry Van Ash with nine of us jumped at one time. Oh, my God. Back in the day. Um, there's, there's perceived danger. Like he's never, they've never had an accident. Nobody's died from it. But when we jumped back in the eighties, I remember people like you are out of your freaking mind. Like, why would you jump up of a perfectly safe bridge attached to a rubber band? There was perceived danger. And so we do that on race all the time. And everything is so tested 
up the wazoo, um, that it's more about the mental leap that you guys are making than the physical risk that you are taking. You're not going to die, but you might get some anxiety and you might get stressed out doing it. And that's what we're capturing. And quite frankly, it's more interesting to watch somebody go through the mental leaps that they have to go through than seeing somebody get hurt in a challenge. Nobody wants to watch that and we would never show it. It's not something yeah. we're going after. We're not trying to hurt people, we're trying to push them mentally, mental leaps. Um, yeah, mentally that pushed me and it pushed me to the point that I'll never yeah. do that again. So that was fun. Good to know. Yeah, but but you know, you know, people say, you hear people say, I can't do that. I would never do that. Yeah, you would. Yeah. If I said to you, if I said to you, you need to leap off this bridge to save your children, you'd yeah. leap off the bridge. You wouldn't even think about it. Mm -hmm. So it's not that you can't do something. It's whether you want what your what your what your drive is like. What what is the motivation? If if your kid said to you, you know, were yelling to you, and you had to go do some crazy thing and risk your life, you'd do it in a heartbeat. Um, what is, and this is a question from Instagram, like what's the most underrated place you've traveled to? Like a place you've gone to that you think people should know about? So many, I, yeah. I, you know, I, I think Italy is, if I had to go back to one country again and again and again and again, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and, and revisit the same country, I'd probably choose Italy for a myriad of reasons. I, I love the people. I love the food. I love the culture. I love the history, the, the diversity from the Dolomites in the north down to the toe of the boot, Rome, um, Sicily, the Aeolian Islands, Lipari, Stromboli, you know, the, the volcano it where Isabella <laughs> Rossellini was born. Stromboli, I got hungry. Oh, I, I had a dinner. I had a, a five-star dinner on top of Stromboli way back in the day. I took a five-star chef to the top of the volcano, timed it with the sunset, and the chef dug a hole, cooked dinner in the heat of the volcano, and the volcano's going off, and we're wearing dinner suits. I mean, it, it, the Italian people and and the culture, I I think, I I love I love Italy. Oh, I love it. I wasn't sold. expecting that. I was expecting some country I'd never heard yeah. of, like Slovakistan or some just place because you've been everywhere. It, yeah. It, um, but Italy, okay. No, I, but I, I, I agree because it's very. You can have like a big, yeah. a huge experience in one in one country. We, we got to spend some time in a place that was almost Italy, and that is a place that's Corsica. And I, Phil, I want to go back. I was like that time yeah. that we spent looking over Bonifacio, um, and also just that little marina there, and all of the towers on the way there. I just feel like I could spend weeks there and probably never get bored. Yeah. Um, the, the the islands in the Mediterranean are are amazing. Um, and, you know, to me, I if some people say, what's your favorite place to go to? It's for me, it's the place I haven't been to. So there's lots of places I have not been to. I've been to 130 something countries. Um, even before I started on race, I'd been in over 70 um, just because I started traveling really young and all the jobs I had leading up to amazing race where travel shows. Um, but I love going to somewhere new. So we have not been to Nepal. Um, uh, I've had three trips canceled there before. I was going to say, it I was, have, I'm not, ours I mean, was one of them, maybe right? spoiler alert, but it was in our passport A Nepal visa was in our passport for the first version of the race. Or was that a red herring? I don't think you go through all that work. Of getting a visa. Kim's calling BS oh, on you. Oh, you might be surprised. <laughs> oh, really? No, we were going to go yeah. to Nepal. We were going to go to uh -huh. Nepal. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm kidding. Um, can I, so another question from C blank 29. Uh, I don't know if you can answer this, but why were there no express passes, speed bumps, U turns on this season? Uh, I, I think there were a lot of adjustments to the, to the show. And I think we just sort of got back to basics. And again, for me personally, I'm, I, I'm, I love, I love the simplicity of our format, and I am more about enhancing the form personally than than like adding in these yeah. newer elements that have come into the show. Um, I've never been a fan of them personally I, as a I, fan. I uh, yeah, I'm I'm old school that way. Mm -hmm. It's you know going back to the football analogy. You don't change the rules of football. What you do is you enhance the game of football. You enhance the way that you shoot it, the way that you see it, the way that you present it, 
with new graphics, with 4K cameras, with phantom cameras that can capture thousand frame a second slow-mos, sky cams. You enhance what works. And it to me, it's the same on Amazing Race. Enhance what works. The basic format works. Stick to the basics and make it as good as you can. So I personally was pleased that we didn't do Me them. too. I, I, as a fan, I'll just say that I just think it gets in the way and like it knocks out really good teams. But, anyway. but as, but as a racer, we had constant anxiety about it. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. I know. It's so funny you because the, the, the few minutes that I've had to spend with Bertram, who I love, who I think is kind of a genius as well. Um, he, one of the first things he's like, he said, I, 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 we were at a pit stop somewhere and he said, this is all about what you do with the anxiety that is presented to you. Like that's what this race is. And right. it's so funny. He said that before we had the restart, before a lot of us learned the true meaning of anxiety when we went through COVID and we all were in, in this place of uncertainty and way before like Kim started to open up about it. And then you guys made the decision as a, as a race to actively talk about that storyline of mental health, of her anxiety, of my ADHD. We've said this several times. We're really happy that that was part of the edit, but I don't think that I've ever seen that much of like the open kind of naming of mental health issues like you did this season, which I thought was really laudable. Well, also, I don't know if we've ever, during the history of Amazing Race, had those uh, struggles so prominent in the zeitgeist, you know, like yeah. we yeah. haven't, right. right. I mean, there's so many people who have suffered, who are still suffering. We all know them. We can all connect with it. You know, one of my favorite moments this season was the restart and standing and talking to all of you. And we really took time. I mean, for those who are listening, we, I don't know, we must've talked for an hour over an hour um, at that starting line and it was cut down. Obviously we've got to make a 43 minute show and we have to get people up on top of a mountain and we've got buses to catch and all that sort of stuff. But we took more time with that opening and that discussion than we ever have. And it was because of what Lula and Lila had been through and people had lost jobs and, and had to change careers and they had really struggled in that time. And it was relatable to the audience. So I was very proud that we went there and I was proud that you guys were prepared to talk about it because we have always tried to have relatable people in front of the camera. And when people hear that from you and they know somebody who's going through it or they're going through it personally, that connection uh, draws them to you. They have that empathy for you. They feel connected with you and they imagine themselves running this as you are with that anxiety, with that ADHD and 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 so there's a connection there. There's a and and this is what I'm seeing from uh, my interactions on Instagram. You may have heard of it. Um, this is what I'm hearing from people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I have to say like the feedback and that like people are writing like letters and they like yeah. people with anxiety and ADHD who are saying like, oh, the, I've, my kid watched this and he has ADHD and now he sees like you can do stupid things. Same like, thing with your anxiety. Yeah. As well. like, um, yeah. So it's it's been nice to connect with people like that. Um, besides launching an Instagram takeover and just really just knocking it out of the park there, Phil, what's next for you? What do we have to look forward to? Well, uh, I've just finished um, the post production. So when I came back from race, so I was finishing the post production of of Tough as Nails three while we were on the road, uh -huh. and also preparing for Tough as Nails season four while I was on the road. And then I got back from race and immediately went into shoot Tough as Nails four. And then since then, I've been in post production for season four, and we're. Uh, we've just delivered the cut, the first cut of the, the of episode 10 oh, for, wow. for uh, season four. That show, that season, I'm hoping will air in the, in the summer. Okay. Um, and then I'm, we got to pick up for season five of Tough as Nails, which is uh, going to shoot in the summer. And then we have race 34, which will be coming up shortly. He's so, so busy. You're so yeah, busy. So <laughs> you can see I have a lot of time. For to Instagram. Like, He's going to go to sleep go do right Instagram. behind us as so soon as do we're like, done. Just do Instagram live the whole time. So, by the, I mean, season 30, I'm excited that there's going to be season 34 of The Amazing Race. Obviously, COVID is still a thing. There may be a war. So we just, we're just, we're just going with it. We just go for it on The Amazing Race. I, I think you, yeah. I mean, we know that we can 
shoot um, tough as nails and amazing race during COVID. We know that the war situation is a is a, a grave concern. Um, but I think you know we have to. You have to just keep moving forward. We, you know, rather than anticipating what could go wrong, we've got to react to what goes wrong. I think rather than sort of trying to anticipate it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's very worrying what's going on yeah. over there. And yeah. um, have you been to Ukraine? Yeah, yeah, we went there um, in season ten, mm-hmm. and um, I uh, I got held at the airport overnight there one night because. I had a New Zealand passport and um, I didn't need a, a visa with the New Zealand passport, but the immigration decided that night that I did. So I got separated from the crew and spent the night in a holding room and, and slept on some plastic seats. Uh, and then the next morning, the there was a, a woman who was in the, in the U.S. embassy who was a big, amazing race fan, and she managed to get whatever needed to files papers needed to get filed got me out of there and i ran straight to the pit stop and welcomed the team uh wow. with about 15 minutes to spare <laughs> hard Whoa. working man well i, I know you're thinking about yeah. the people of ukraine and as we all were and it was a very odd timing of the finale of our show as that stuff was it yeah was and that was strange. what i struggled i couldn't uh I, I i went radio silent on social media because i just couldn't i couldn't I, I was trying to justify it. Like I wanted to say something, but you know, it's so hard because it's every, everything is so political and um, yeah. I mean, the only way that I just thought that we need to do stuff behind the scenes, you know, like support um, there's, there's a number of places where you can support right. Ukraine and what's going on. Um, but I also feel very sorry for the Russian people who are not, aware of what is happening that's also grossly unfair to them because they just don't know yeah and um but it's i'm very worried about it and i'm really worried about it i'm worried about the stability of everything and what what could happen and it's just it's just incredibly difficult to watch and also to to get some kind of perspective you know what the hell is it like you know i just can't even think of it and we're kind of in this catch 22 situation, right? Like we go in, we ask, we, if we go into help, we escalate the problem. We escalate the problem. And it's like, there's no win. I, I, I would hate to be the decision maker right now. No, I mean, as, that's as right. the president. And it's, it's, you know, when we were talking about the finale of our show the whole time, we were like, it feels really silly to talk about a game show right now, but let's do it. And we found that people were eager for a distraction and yeah. just knowing how long. And, and there it was so much us, confusion at that point anyway. Yeah. Um, and it's, it, it still keeps us up yeah. at night. And um, I admire you trying to p- plan yeah. a worldwide race during all this. And, and by the way, like, I'm, um, thank you so much for your time. You've given us more than um, we could ever have dreamed for. Uh, I know you're a really busy guy. You just listed how busy you are. You're interviewing from your bed. So you'll probably try to sleep after this and you've earned that sleep. <laughs> Or are you familiar? This is the uh, this is the office and spare bedroom. So oh, I guarantee you slept in that bed. Come visit. on, yeah, exactly. There's That's for us. Oh to no, no, visit. I've definitely, I've definitely yeah. slept in that bed. Don't, I, don't yeah. worry. No, no, no. I, um, I've slept here. But. So Phil, I, I want to end with this because it's something that I that I've said in a couple of interviews because it's something that you said to me and it, you, you weren't on camera when this happened. You were just sitting in the back talking to all of us. Where where we were talking, we we're asking you what everyone always asks you, which is what's the favorite place you've ever been in the Amazing Race, and you said, and I will never forget this. You you said, I have been to a gajillion places around the world. And here's, here's something no one will ever tell you. Those places are all great. And it, they don't mean anything without the people that you experience them with. Right. And we all got a chance to kind of look at each other when that was happening. And we all kind of got goosebumps and we looked, you know, that's, you, you perfectly encapsulated the bond that we have made with the rest of the racers and that we'll continue to have for the rest of our lives and how grateful we were not only to visit those right. places, but as you said, to meet new people. And you were one of the people that we got to meet as well and travel with as well. So we feel a connection with you that we don't feel with other people. And we just want to thank you for helping us make that happen. Yeah, no. And thank you for putting yourselves out there for being on the show. I thank everybody who comes on the show. And like I said, opening themselves up emotionally and sharing a lot of themselves. I, I, I think it's incredibly brave. I, I, I would, I, I would struggle 
being so open the way you guys are as a, as a contestant. And um, so I admire what you do, but you're absolutely right. Uh, I have been to the most magical places in the world, but the places that I remember going are where I'm with my, my dad or with my family, you know, my wife or daughter and, and where you're sharing that, place together that's when it takes true mean takes on true meaning um because then you remember who you were with and you remember that moment rather than just looking at a beautiful view and you're standing there by yourself and it's like you've got no one to share it with and that that's there's lots of places in the world that look like you know quite similar um but it's it's that point of difference who are you there with them and what are you sharing with them in that moment Good stuff there, Phil. <laughs> no. Um, Th- thanks for letting us ride on your jet. We named it. Uh, did we Did we tell you what we named it? Big Phil. We named it Big Phil. That was the name. Anytime we saw the oh, plane, the, we called oh, the it. Eyebrow. I know, and, and then the eyebrow. You, if you're not so, watching this, if you're on podcast, Phil just flashed the eyebrow, which yes, is and now has. Said, yeah. So, oh, God. Oh, look at that. You can never get Botox. That's what it means. I, I, I well. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Look. I promise you I haven't had any Botox, and I, <laughs> I, I, I will not have oh, any Botox. you can't, because apparently somebody sent in a question, like, what does he feel about his eyebrows having their own social media? Maybe I need to start running the Phil's eyebrows Instagram. Maybe See, I can grow that. So maybe if Phil just speaks his own mind, but the name Through of the, the page eyebrows. is Phil's eyebrows. I think it exists. So the, I, I didn't look at it. Well, I he can leverage that. Okay. Sure can. I think, uh, yeah, yeah. Hashtag browsy or something. I, I was, uh, was, was, was out there at one point. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much. We really appreciate your time and we'll be looking for season 34 of the amazing race and tough as nails season four this summer. Yes. Right? Yeah. This we hope we have, we haven't got an official date yet, but oh my god it's such a great season um it's yeah i'm so proud of the team it's it's a goodie that's that's again another show i would never i would self-eliminate day one i could oh no no yeah but um listen uh i would also like to thank uh all our cast uh this season and and thank you to you both for uh leaving your families and (laughs) trusting trusting us with your with your physical health and your mental health uh, on on this race around the world. Not easy to get up and leave your beautiful family and go around the world, but you trusted us. And, um, you know, it was a big relief for all of us to get everybody back home safely. Mm-hmm. You know, it's something we take really seriously, which is why we stopped in the first place. So thank you for trusting us to be able to do what we felt we could do. Yeah, it was uh, an adventure of a lifetime for sure. So thank you. Great. Bye, Phil. Phil, thank you. Phil, thank you so much.